this is Chris with Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. If you've ever sanded between color coats, click the, sus the subscribe button now. Uh, so here we are with Jim Fuller's double neck guitar. Uh, Matt wanted me to talk a little bit about the paint process. Uh, last week we used Simtex sealer on it, sealed it all up, and then we let it wait about a week. Uh, one of the reasons that we do that, our buddy Mike Learn told us that even though the Simtech cures really fast, it still can shrink a little bit over time. And so we wanted to make sure that it cured completely 100%. So we gave it about a week. Um, then we started the process of sanding. I sanded it originally with uh, 220 grit sandpaper, flat sanded the front and the back, uh, and then, well, flat sanded everything. And then 320, and then uh, I went at it with a scotch Brite pad, made sure that everything was completely flat, completely smooth, completely perfect. Uh, and then yesterday I came out and after masking off the necks, because we left the necks uh, natural, because they've got all sorts of flame and they're super sexy. Jim uh, said that he, he really liked the, the necks and he was glad that we didn't paint white over them. And I said, Chris was, was the only one who wasn't glad that we... Uh, masking the necks was a little difficult, <laughs> but it looks really good and it wasn't, you know, like the end of the world. And then I uh, laid down the base of the white, did two coats of that, uh, and it's the whitest white we could find. And then painted the headstocks, put the logo on, stripped off all the, all the masking, and shot five coats of our production clear on it, and here we are. And it, it, it seems like it was, you know, really easy, but it took a lot of time. So Chris, we don't spray nitrocellulose lacquer anymore. Tell me a little bit about the paint that we do use and the clear that we use. Uh, so we use an acrylic enamel uh, base coat with a urethane top coat. So what are the advantages to using an acrylic enamel color coat? Uh, my, my favorite advantage is that you can get literally any color that you want in, in this paint. Uh, metallics, solids, candies, literally any color. If you've ever seen a car in that color, or even if you haven't seen a car in that color, you can get any color you want. And how about the urethane top coat? What are the advantages to using that? Um, it's a little more durable. Um, it, it goes on in fewer coats. Um, it doesn't yellow over time. It doesn't age over time. Um, I, that could be an, I think it's an advantage. Some people think that's a disadvantage. What are some of the pitfalls that people can avoid when they're, they're painting their guitar? What are some common mistakes that people make? I think the most common mistake is lack of prep and thinking that the paint is going to fix issues down the road when it won't. Uh, the number one thing that we do is we make sure that, that when we sand the sealer that the guitar is perfect. Any flaws that you see in the sealer coat, you're going to see in the finish and it might even look worse than it does with the sealer coat or in the sealer coat. Sometimes you don't even see it in the sealer and then it manifests later in yeah, the, in the yeah. paint. Yeah, and if you think that clear is going to fix it, it's not. Um, I read a lot of guitar forums and a lot of guys just don't prep enough and then they find themselves constantly going back and re-sanding things when really if they'd sanded it properly the first time, sealed it properly, and then just sand it back once, shoot all your color, shoot all your clear, and then wet sand and buff, that's infinitely better than sanding in between each coat of color, and clear and all of that. And if you're if you're using metallic paint and you're sanding in between color coats, you're just you're just screwing yourself. Um, the only time I'll sand a color coat is if I've messed up, if it's got a big booger in it or something went wrong. Um, yeah, so we we typically I'll try and put color coat and clear coat on on the same day or at least within a 24 hour period because that's what the paint says to do. Um, and if I've done everything right, it'll look really, really good and I won't have had to sand a whole bunch because there's still wet sanding and buffing to do. What tool or product have you started using recently or in the past couple years that has, has altered the way that you paint? Um, I think the number one thing that we use now that we didn't used to use is the Simtex sanding sealer. It does a really good job of sealing up the wood. Uh, it goes on 
pretty thick, but you sand most of it off and you sand it flat. So, um, do we get any money from Simtex Sealer? No, not a we actually, dime. Yeah, <laughs> they charge us full boat plus <laughs> shipping. Um, yeah, so it, it works really well. Um, it goes on thicker, so you don't have to put on as many coats. And that's the other thing with the, with the regular paint too is people talk about nitrocellulose lacquer versus this stuff. This paint, when we're done, is as thin as a nitro-finished guitar. It just took a lot fewer coats to get there. We used to shoot 10 or 12 coats of nitro. Now we'll shoot four or five coats of, of this stuff. Um, we did a fabric guitar the other day, and we had a uh, this to trim out after the whole guitar was done, and it was paper thin. The finish was paper thin on that guitar. And it was a piece of fabric that you dug out of, of there. So, with, yeah. with sealer, lots of sealer, and clear on it, and it was still paper thin. It was like a, about the thickness of uh, construction paper. So what do we do next? So uh, we'll let this cure for about a week. Same deal with this as the other stuff. It'll shrink back, so if you start sanding on it too soon, um, some of those scratches could come back. Um, so we'll wet sand it flat. Buff it, and then you know. Uh, and we have to it. figure out how to wire it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine hundred different things that this guitar is going to do. What's it? What? What are the? What are the? The knobs and switches going to do? All right. So we'll start top to bottom. So humbucker, humbucker. This is the switch for these two. Just regular three-way switch. Um, humbucker with a coil split. Single coil humbucker with a coil split. This is the five way for these. Um, volume, tone with a, with push push for coil split. Same here. Push push push, push is cooler than push then pull. Push pull. Too, yeah, yeah. you just poke at it. It's fun to do. Uh, <laughs> jack, and this is the neck control. Will we be able to play be, both necks at the same oh, time? That's the only reason to have a double neck, right? <laughs> Besides looking cool. I mean, I look cool just holding it. You and do. It's not even done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Floyd Rose. Everything on this guitar is going to be black. That's right. Every <laughs> every single thing. Yeah. Yep. So. And even though it's got a lock nut, we're using locking tuners because yep. getting into this neighborhood here, let's we're going to ease yeah. ease the process by. Is that or banjo tuners, right? Yeah. 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 No one Violin likes that. Tuners. Yeah. So. Why does it only say Texas Toast on the six string headstock? Because yeah, this is too skinny in here. <laughs> Texas Toast on the second nut, uh, neck. Yeah, so it's just about finished, sort of. All that's left is another dozen hours of yeah of assembly and mm -hmm. fret work and buffing and yeah. not yeah. necessarily in that order. And it only gets scarier from here because yeah. now you can't scratch it. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for watching. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, don't do anything. Click the bell if you really liked it. You could leave note. You could leave me a comment because I love answering comments. Matt loves answering comments. <laughs> I love reading comments. Um, yeah, next next video, this guitar will be almost finished. It's getting really close. Thanks for watching. Don't play my guitar,